What's going on guys? Good morning. Uh, gonna maybe try and do some controlled burning today, but first things first, uh, got a couple uh, calves to tag here, so let's get in here and get out our handy dandy tagging kit. So first thing in the morning, all the dogs are super pumped when you walk in here. That's why they're going to raise, raise some hell here for a little bit. Uh, make a lot of noise. Yeah. There's a lot of different things guys do when it comes to tagging calves. They have different strategies. One is they use all the same color tag and use different ears to distinguish the sex. So um, one guy I know does like... For a heifer, he puts it in the left ear. Hef, left. Um, for a steer, he puts a tag in the right ear. This year, I'm going to do different colors. So I'm going to do an orange tag for heifers and a yellow tag to distinguish steers. Just because driving through the pasture would be super easy to look and tell who's who. Um, you'll notice like some of our mama cows have like custom ear tags. So you're obviously not going to see them. But... Uh, Heifers and mama cows, we put our custom ear tags in because if they happen to get out or if we go to sell them, everybody knows right away who they belong to and they just look really nice. Like when you're trying to sell them, they just look, uh, makes them stand out. So anyway, this uh, one bull calf was born the other night and he's probably going to be pretty spry. And the other one was born last night right at dark and I just let them be. Uh, let mom take care of them so um i know for sure we've got a yellow tag to put on and maybe two but we'll get in there and find out so as you can see on this mom she'll let us get all right up here but you can see our prr ear tags hey mama that we put in there when you have cows out on stocks in the winter or on hot wire you know if you have cattle they're bound to get out and instead of well who's got red cows who's got black cows you can look at that ear tag and know exactly whose they are. Hopefully, they're not ours, but, you know, it does make it easier in the event that they are. Um, so, we'll match up this uh, mom to baby. So, here's the one that was born last night, or toured last night in the afternoon. And we're going to take down mom's number and write it on a tag. And get the get the baby tagged here we have red angus base cows so our mama cows are straight red angus but we have an akaushi purebred bull I got my tags made up here i'm gonna put my uh my button on here put my tag in the gun just like this and we'll go get the animal and quick and easy uh, it's just like getting your ears pierced very uh very simple so let's go get get her so like i say if you let them get too old they can get a little harder to catch <clears throat> this one was born last night i've got a little shepherd's hook you can use or you can get them pinned against the fence but like as you can see they're gonna run on us so Have to try a little harder, I suppose. One, like I say, is down. She was, she was born last night, so still wasn't, didn't quite have her sea legs yet. This guy, he is spry. He is born off the bat. Mom had him stashed for a while, so um, we didn't actually find him until. I mean, he is up and ready to go, so. He's probably going to pose a little bit of a challenge. Might have to set the camera down again. This happens every once in a while when uh, you have some and you don't catch them right away. That you got to get, got to work a little harder at it. Mama's a good mama. But he's also got wheels on him. Mm -hmm. 
happy is. Happy as can be. Mama is not happy. All these cows are pretty nice. They are pretty docile. I've had some of them since they were heifers. Calved them out as heifers, calf heifers. But uh, when you go to tag their calf, they flip, flip a switch. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, it's good that they're good moms. But uh, there's a few numbers in the herd you got to definitely watch out for. Her being one of them. So, got him tagged. All is well. We're going to leave him alone. Roll out a bale of alfalfa for him. that's like asking how many acres you farm or how much money you make in my opinion like uh, you just don't ask farmers and ranchers like how much of something they have what I will say though is that we don't have a lot of one thing we have a little bit of everything we have quality over quantity um, so here we have a small herd of you know spring cows that you know some might argue aren't gonna pay the bills because you know, you need economy of scale. You need to have a bunch. Um, but like I say, we are kind of niche marketing what we have. So these spring cows, like I say, are, are calving out Akiyushi calves. Um, we have a couple different bulls that they're bred to. And the Akiyushi is specific, it's a specific breed of Wagyu. So if you have Angus, within Angus, there's Black Angus, Red Angus. Well, there's Wagyu. And within Wagyu, there's Akushi, which is like Red Angus, essentially. essentially excuse me. Um, so that's what we have here. We're calving out these spring cows. These babies, we will then sell to um, growers and finishers who are looking to market prime box beef. Um, we will keep back some ourselves to market under our own private beef label. Um, we've also on a different farm we've got some heifers that are bred some fall bred heifers we'll sell some replacement heifers or some uh, bred heifers I'm just looking at this calf uh, and also we're doing a little bit of dirt work in this lot and some other lots that we'd like to um, eventually start growing more cattle starting cattle um, that are Wagyu Akushi um, type breeds um, we kind of see a demand for that so we have a lot of different irons in the fire. Like I say, if you straight up ask, like, oh, you got, you know, 100 head of cattle, we don't. Um, but like I say, the cattle that we do have um, do all right for us. So we don't need to have 200 head of cattle. Um, you'll see, I'm sure, throughout all these videos that we have a ton of grass, like a lot of grass, that we could probably run more cows than we do. Um, but because we have the hunting lodge, we kind of need that habitat for hunting. And so, um, they each kind of correlate off each other. I can't leave all my grass standing to hunt and have no cows, and at the same time, I can't graze everything and have no hunters. Like, we have to kind of find a happy medium with our operation, um, and so right now, this is kind of where it's at. My windows are foggy again, but here's where we just had some dirt work that eventually we're gonna pour a pad, put in some feed bunks, and uh, maybe start uh, feeding some more cattle in here, uh, make this lot more, um, profitable right now we're really only calving out um, a few cows in the spring or in the fall and that's the only time that this lots getting used so if we can increase our use by feeding cattle backgrounding cattle um, finishing uh, cattle and that's what we're gonna try and do there so pro tip pick up your net wrap save the fish and the environment and your cows cows are liable to get that start eating it chewing on it and can cause zero problems fortunately we have not had that issue but i've seen it on the internet so it must be true so we're picking them up save the environment we just caught, talked to the fire chief and we got the green light to do some burning we've got all the essentials we've got our drip torch our lighter 
and our leaf blower. Do not knock the leaf blower, she comes in handy. We've also got the ranger filled up with water so that we have a spray tank just in case. The only other thing I'm going to do is make sure all my weeds and corn stalks are out from under it from working the other day so that they don't catch fire. Quick test, make sure this is all going to work. Uh, CP33 buffer strips around our fields. So we burn for a lot of different reasons around the ranch, but the uh, uh, stuff we're burning today is stuff that we are mandated by the government to burn uh, as a part of our uh, CRP contract. So we want to remain in compliance. So that's what we're gonna do today is take care of that. Kind of a dreary day, but I like burning on days like this because it uh, makes you feel a little bit better that it's not gonna just take off and rip across the county. Vantage point of this buffer strip you can see what I'm talking about by a CRP buffer strip. The road's right there. This is only about anywhere between 15 and 30 foot. Most of them are right at 30 foot. Um, but yeah, you can get an idea. We have a uh, commodity crop out here, um, ag ground, row crop, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it was beans last year. It's going to be corn this year. And then you can see our 30 foot strips. Every single one of our fields uh, out here have 30 foot roughly buffer strips around them that uh, in the spring we have to burn spray control fire is one of my favorite tools to use on the ranch i showed you earlier this morning where we had burned and it's already greening up in that the stuff that's greening up is like alfalfa and brome and that's okay there um, i wanted a place to green up quick so that if it were to turn off nasty and muddy i could kick cows out in there um, when they're calving out here though we don't want that short green grass. Uh, I mean, obviously it'll get green in the summer, but you can see how tall and thick it is and you can see the brome encroachment. You can see where that's green. Um, and what that'll do is it'll come up and kind of choke out your stand of native grass. So we'll burn it, come back in as soon as it greens up and spray out uh, the brome that decides to come up. Um, like I say, uh, we do that on our own on a lot of properties that we have. This one, we have to do it um, because, again, it's enrolled in a CRP program um, with the government. I hope when I put this on the computer, there's not a ton of water spots on the lens because it is pretty dreary. I don't even know how to explain it. But here's a good example. Uh, we're going to burn here. Um, but here's a good example of how the brome um, invades our native grass stand. You can see all this really light white gray area versus the yellow orange area. The gray stuff is brome that's dormant. Now you can see that it's greening up first which is why you're able to go back in with Roundup uh, or a chemical and spray it out and then leave room for this uh, native grass to come up. Big blue stem, little blue stem, Indian grass, switch grass, side oats gamma, all those warm season grasses. Um, I can come in here now and spray this and it would kill, you know, the gray areas. You can see how it has affected this stand. You can see how it's way thicker down there where that's what it's supposed to be is this. Um, however, um, sometimes where the thatch, the dormant stuff, the last year's crop is on top, you don't always get what's down in there uh, with your chemical. So it's best to just burn it off. Give it a week or two, a rain or two, it'll come back up this tall, nail it, and then you leave plenty of room for that good stuff, that cover that birds like. Um, obviously, if you were a bird, deer, anything, this isn't uh, much for you. One thing we try to do out here is not to enroll everything in CRP. I like the flexibility of being able to do whatever I want when I want. Um, so if this stand, for instance, uh, this stand is actually in CRP, um, but one thing that we have done and had pretty good success with is turning out our cows now. Um, while this brome is greening up, turn cows out on it and just intensively early stock it. Um, graze it pretty hard and then pull them off when the warm season grasses start growing and they will have taken care of the job for you. No labor and burning, no chemical costs. You win twice that way because you get some feed for cattle um, and you got to take care of the problem that you had. Um, however, if it's enrolled in CRP, 
you can't do that. Uh, the other thing is, is you know, say say this brome got too bad and hay prices went up or down or you had uh, contracts to fill, one thing you could do is come in here and hay it, um, you know, if you wanted to. And again, if it's, if it's wrapped up in a CRP program while the payment is nice, um, you're just on the government's schedule and I'm, I'm not knocking it. I mean, I think it's a great program. Um, but I'm just saying if you're starting out or you have a piece of grass or whether it's hunting or cattle or whatever, um, the answer is not always CRP. Think of, think of the other avenues of income that you can make off of this farm um, when you can do what you want. If we had a drought and I said, man, I want to hay this, um, I don't have to go in and get special provisions. I just do it, you know, um, if it was not in CRP. Same thing with grazing cattle. If I wanted to rest and rotate some of my pastures, like you could go in and graze some of these small paddocks out early and buy yourself some time on some other pasture. But just some things to think about. That's one way that, like I was saying earlier, we try and manage for both hunting and cattle. Um, and why there's a fine line, like, man, you know, you could fence this off and run way more cows, but. guys we are just about ready to call it a day here we are finishing up our last buffer strip here then we'll go around uh kind of after dark where it's really easy to see those embers or those things that are still burning and uh, just hit them with a little bit of water uh we got a lot of burning done today we got the, these buffer strips like these behind me these 30 uh foot and bigger buffer strips for uh around our fields we had to burn some of these in order to stay in compliance for crp Behind that, you can see we also burnt a pasture that when it greens up, we'll turn around and uh, turn cows out on it um, with calves. Did some burning on a piece of grass that uh, had a lot of brome encroachment. So when uh, the brome starts growing back, we'll come in there and nail it with a dose of Roundup uh, to uh, prevent that brome from coming in and overtaking that native grass stand. So pretty excited uh it's like spring cleaning like fire is one of my favorite tools to use because everything just looks so good and green uh when it comes back and all the weeds and stuff are gone like there's a lot of broom weed and cane out here but it's also like the most stressful thing we do on the ranch because you can get out of hand in a hurry so anyway thanks for watching guys catch you in the next one make sure to like and subscribe if you uh, enjoy what we're doing here I'm still learning, so bear with me. Thanks.